The sed command is a stream editor, but I think of it as mostly a utility that I use to read in a file and make substitutions, make replacements for one pattern match to another. For instance, if I have a file like this sample here, I can see a series of lines with key value properties. And so I can go in using a sed command and I can cat this and then pipe it to sed and say, give me a replacement of all spaces with commas. And if I close up the pattern like that and in the string, I can run it. And you'll see for each line, it'll go through and it'll find the first space and replace it with a comma. It leaves the other spaces in place though. If I were to add the G, then it would apply it globally. And so all of the spaces would be replaced with a comma. This is kind of what SED's built for. It's not so great when you want to do something like a new line replacement, because SED really isn't meant to handle that. But we can make SED do it anyway, because it's pretty powerful, and there's a lot of different flags you can use to kind of manipulate the way it works. So if I were just to run this as is and say I want to replace all new lines with, say, a comma, I would run it and nothing happens. The file looks the same as when it came in. And that's because it's running this substitution against each line in the file. And so it's not finding any new lines. It's finding this whole line and there's no backslash end character in that line. So it doesn't make a replacement and it goes on to the next line, so on and so forth. I can make said do this anyway, though, by adding uh, a few options here. Um, so if you start out with some dash E flags, this tells said to run a particular uh, function. So this dash E flag would say run the substitute function. But then I could add a few things before that. I could say first set a marker, set a label A. That's what the colon does. And then if I add another flag that says then do the end command, and this tells said to join the current line that it's found with the next line. So it would join these two lines. But then we've still got the rest of the lines that we would need to process. But if I were to just run it like this, you could see that we get this first line, and then we get a comma, and then we get the rest of this line. And then for each subsequent line after that, it's able to join the line below it and put a comma, but it's not combining all of them. So we've still got you know a new line here, a new line here, a new line here, so on and so forth. So what we want to do is add another E flag with a branch instruction. So we say branch to the A label. So it'll combine those first two lines, then it'll hit here and it'll say jump back to A, and then it'll process again. And so it'll find the next new line. So the, the thing after this line, it'll find this line and combine it. And then it'll hit this branch again and go back and it'll keep doing that until it combines all of them into one long line with these slash n still still in place. And then it'll run the substitution globally across the whole thing. Now that didn't do anything. And that's because said errored out at the end. And so what we need to do is tell it not to loop back to A when we've reached the last character or the last, the last line. So I can add um, this right here, which says do this only for lines that aren't the, the terminating line. So then if I run that, you can see they all get combined with commas like that. So even though said's not the ideal tool for this kind of use case, it's nice to know that we can still pull it off, and it's kind of cool to learn some of the different pieces that allow you to extend said beyond just the traditional search and replace that um, at least I think of using said for.